So was I wrong about the camera on the Google Pixel 9 Pro? Today, we're gonna find out by using it in the most difficult genre of photography, street photography. And big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So my mission with this photographer versus smartphone series when I started it on this channel was simply to find out how close are these smartphone cameras to professional cameras. And I wanted to take my 10 years of professional photography experience and apply it to these phones and really try to answer the question of how good are these cameras. Now a couple months ago I made a video about the Google Pixel 9 Pro and I was blown away by the camera on this smartphone. I proclaimed that it was the best smartphone camera I've used. It's currently Currently my favorite smartphone camera but in that video the test I did of the camera was relatively safe I had amazing lighting conditions everything worked in my favor and I wanted to find out if I'm wrong about any aspects of this camera and figure out how close this thing actually is to a professional tool where are the pitfalls in the Google Pixel 9 Pro camera and the best way to test this is by doing what I consider the most difficult photography genre street photography it's something that I love something that I'm used to to something that there are plenty of videos about on this channel. So I took the Google Pixel 9 Pro up to New York with me to find out where are the limitations on this camera? How close can we get to a professional photography tool with the Google Pixel 9 Pro? And I did three main tests to find this out. The first was just a basic test. I basically found compositions that I like, situations that I thought looked good, and the camera pretty much performed exactly how it performed in my initial test. I loved everything about all three cameras. The ultra wide looked good, the telephoto was good, it wasn't anything blowing me away, and I really liked the standard photos as well. And I loved the editing ability of these files. The raw files are absolutely amazing from the Google Pixel 9 Pro. So after this basic test, everything seemed on point with my initial video. Now the second test of the Pixel 9 Pro was something that I didn't go over in depth in my initial video, and that is a low light test of the camera. Now while I was in New York, I had work events at night, so I was unable to get out and shoot at night but I took the camera into the multiple subway stations in New York which honestly is something that I love to shoot anyways with my camera I've made a bunch of awesome photos in all the different train stations around New York so I thought this would be a great test of this camera and unfortunately this test is where things got a little bit iffy for me these low light photos yes look good but they're just not hitting the same as my camera would there were a lot of scenarios where I was thinking to myself man I wish I wish I had my Leica QP with me, I wish I had my Nikon Z8 with me, because I knew that the images that I would make from one of those cameras would be so much better than what I made with the Google Pixel 9 Pro. Now, not to say these images are necessarily bad, I thought they edited well, I thought they were stellar for what a smartphone is, but these results didn't blow me away the same way I was blown away by the initial video and even the photos that I did in that more basic test earlier in this video. Personally, I felt the main issue with these low light photos was the main issue with all smartphones. The Google Pixel 9 Pro is not immune to low light noise and grain that happens when you take these smartphones into dark situations. These photos at times felt a little bit flat to me. They felt a little bit muddy. They did edit pretty well, especially when I compare them to everything else I've done with the Pixel. I would say the editing capabilities that I love from the Pixel 9 Pro match even in this low light situation, but overall the photos just were a little bit disappointing to me especially considering how much I love the images made in more well-lit situations. Now, the third test I did of the Google Pixel 9 Pro was what I call the pure street photography test. I wasn't thinking about this video when I was out making these photos. I was just using this camera exactly how I would use any of my other cameras when I was out in the streets of New York. And I also edited these photos in a more artistic, harsh way. I wanted these to have a more gritty New York feel to them. And something interesting here happened with this test. I felt like the way these images look, the way they process, the colors of them, the sharpness, the clarity, the contrast, everything was very on point. I love a lot of these images and they feel exactly how I wanted them to feel. Gritty, New York, artistic street photos. But the big issue I had with the Google Pixel 9 Pro was twofold. One was the processing speed on the camera. The ability for you to time an image, which is so important in street photography. There were a lot of scenarios where I would snap a photo and think I got the shot timed perfectly and I'd go and look at it and the subject had moved from the frame that I had composed in my head and 
It just didn't look the way I intended it to look. And I really don't think there's any way around this because obviously the phone has to write these raw files, apply all the computational elements to the photo, and it just is what it is. It's not the same shutter mechanism that you're used to from any other camera. And on top of that, something I noticed with the Pixel 9 photos as well is the fact that you had to be very still with your camera. If you were moving quite a bit, maybe you were just quickly moving to try to get a shot, these images came off a little bit blurry. Now, I'm not sure if that's because of the processing time or just because I wasn't set and stationary, but I have a feeling that the shutter speed on these images was lower than it needed to be, which results in this camera shake. Typically with a normal camera, you could bump your speed up to something like, I don't know, one eight hundred of a second, one one thousandth of a second, and you know when you're out in the street, even if you move your camera very quickly, you're gonna get a clear shot. That did not seem possible with the Pixel 9 Pro. Now there's one more huge issue with the Pixel 9 Pro when I apply it to this pure photography workflow, but before I talk about that, I briefly wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now as smartphone photography gets more and more popular, one of the main questions I get is how can I make money with my photography? And there's a number of different ways. You can go the traditional route of getting clients, you can sell prints, you could sell presets like I do. Notice the formulas in the bottom left of the photos. That is there so people can replicate my editing style by going to my website and picking up my presets. And my website, evanramp.com, is the reason I'm able to do all these things and make money as a photographer. And no one makes it easier to build a website than Squarespace. Squarespace gives everyday artists like you and me, people who have no web design experience, the ability to make a beautiful website that also allows you to showcase your work and potentially make money from your skills. If you're that person who wants to get clients, you can create a contact me page on your website, you can host your portfolio, or if you're someone who's looking to sell prints, you can create a print store and sell your prints through a Squarespace site, or you can do what I do and sell digital products or courses on Squarespace. And I have multiple videos on this channel breaking down all those different things. I have a video about selling prints, have a video about creating portfolio, have a video about how I build built my exact site, and I have a video about how to sell courses. I will link all those down below in the description under a tab called Website Resources. So if you are a creative person out there, whether it's with your smartphone or a professional camera, you have no excuse to not be taking your business to the next level, and Squarespace is the best solution for it. With tools like Fluid Engine that allow you to easily customize your site, Squarespace payments that allow you to process payments straight through Squarespace, email marketing tools so you can contact potential customers, and advanced SEO options, Squarespace is a no-brainer for any creator out there. So go to squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial, watch one of those videos linked in the description down below, and when you're ready to sign up, use code evanramp to save 10% at checkout. That's squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial and use code evanramp to save 10% at checkout. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. So my biggest issue with the Google Pixel 9 Pro when I put it in this professional setting is the fact that getting the files off of this camera is not the easiest if you are in the Mac ecosystem. Now, I've looked it up online. There are some workarounds for this, but it's not as seamless as a professional camera where you just plug your SD card into your computer or even an iPhone where you can plug the iPhone into your MacBook. If you are a Mac user, to get the photos and RAW files off of this device, you have to use Google Drive. And in this video, getting the screen recordings off of this camera onto my computer to make the video was also done through Google Drive, which dramatically slowed down my workflow. I'm talking it slowed it down to the point where I almost didn't want to make this video. And that right there is a massive limitation for someone who's looking to put this camera in a more professional setting if you're a Mac user. If you're a PC user, it might be a little bit easier for you. I'm not familiar with that ecosystem. But at the end of the day, this workflow limitation is a big deal for me when I'm trying to use the Pixel 9 Pro as more of a professional tool. And that leads into my final thoughts on the Pixel 9 Pro for street photography and more professional situations. Everything that I said about the Pixel 9 Pro in my initial video is still 100% true. These are my favorite RAW files, still my favorite smartphone camera, but if I was going to use this in a more professional setting, the limitations are there. We're still not up to the point where this can replace a professional tool when it comes to low light. The images, they look decent. You can get away with them if you're casually making photos. You'll probably love them if you're just casually making photos. But if you're looking at these low light photos from the lens, no pun intended, of someone like me who's used to looking at and working with RAW files from all different types of cameras, you might find yourself having some limitations, especially if you're in a scenario where you need a nice clean image and you need some reliability. It felt like the images in low light from this camera were just a little bit 
hit or miss is how I would put it. I never really knew if the photo was gonna look good or not. And the example photos in this video are a prime indicator of that. Some of the images look awesome, some of them not so much. And when it comes to using this in a more professional setting, one of the big things you have to keep in mind that I learned in the third test of this was having the camera stationary and also using subjects that are a little bit more stationary is going to work in your favor. If you are making photos, let's say of people, making sure that they pose and stay still is going to help you get the best image possible. If you're trying to time images from the Pixel 9 Pro, like you would say from this Leica right here, you could run into some issues with the processing speed on this. So this camera, while great and still my favorite smartphone camera, cannot beat a professional camera quite yet. But all in all, this was a great excuse to get out and do some street photography, explore the city in between my work obligations. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on using the Google Pixel 9 Pro for street photography or more professional situations. Let me know if you agree with me, disagree with me, what your own experiences are with the camera. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you are not yet, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.